Task three for reverse engineering is to create um, a rendered image. I'm just going to quickly go over that. So the first thing you need to do is open up Inventor Studio. Uh, and then when you're in here, some of the scene styles that are pre-existing don't quite cover it. So let's go, for example, to what I would like is um, a reflective plane at the back here so we can see some of the features in the reflection. But if I just go to the, the right-hand side view, you can see that it's actually maybe too close. So if we just change the anti-aliasing down and drop the size just so it renders quickly we can see that maybe it's a bit close to see these features at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how to create a new scene style. So what you can do is you go to scene style uh, you've got the XY reflective ground plane you can copy that scene style and we'll just leave it as that. So a copy of XY reflective plane and then once you're in it, if you right click active and go to environment, it's offset at the moment by 20 mil. But let's say change it to, let's say 30 mil. Um, and I'm going to go save and just do another quick check before we do our proper render. As you can see, you can see a lot more now, but the problem is you've got this shadow here. So the other thing we're going to do is go back into scene styles, go to environment, and where it says show shadows, turn that off. Go done, save it, yes. And then what we can do is we can change the view to perspective rather than orthographic and try and line it up just to give us the best possible view. And again, go back into render. And we'll just do one more just to see how that looks before we up the size. And that's about perfect, it's not too big, it's not too small, we can see most options maybe just turn it around a little bit let's just try and line it up perfectly and then what we're going to do is change this back up get the right size, change the anti-aliasing and then when I hit render it'll, obviously it will take a little longer but that's how you create the rendered image uh, when you've when it's completed rendering, you can click up here and save and save it in the appropriate place with the correct title. And that is doing task three. Um, you may want to do a couple of these, but the main thing is to see as many features of the part as possible and also to be able to distinguish between the cast area and the machined area. So, for example, you can see here where it's cast and on the inside, you've got this sort of rough looking surface, whereas this top face and this face here on the flange you can see is, is smooth so you can tell the difference between machined and cast that's always another it's another main part of, of this piece so you want to try and capture all of that in one render and I think this does it quite well, it's got good colours, good textures you've got the shadows of the part, you can then see the back end of it using the reflection and that is how you create tasks for